Welcome to the Powerful Marketing Tips Podcast, created for overwhelmed business owners who want to build, run, and organize their marketing for good. And here's a brief overview of our guest. So you have an excellent idea, but you're not quite sure how to turn it into a business. Well, our guest, Frederick Carey, will talk about the key steps to being a successful business owner and changing your life. Fred Carey is a powerhouse entrepreneur who has founded more than 10 companies and amassed billions in value. Today, he's focused on helping up-and-coming entrepreneurs get on their paths for success by finding their niches and remaining confident and steadfast along the way. Fred pours all of his business knowledge into teaching the 550,000 new entrepreneurs that decide to start their businesses each month. Ready to change your life? Well, get ready to be inspired. Hello, my friends. It's Marilis here. Today's episode is for you if you are a business owner committed to achieving your goals, because we are very honored to have Fred Carey with us. Welcome, Carey, to our podcast. Hi, it's great being here. Well, thank you. Briefly, please tell us something about yourself that was not in the introduction, because we serve an international audience and our listeners are curious about where you live and who you are. Okay, so I am uh, in San Diego. I'm the single dad of, of two beautiful girls that are grown up now. And um, I'm working harder than I ever have in my life right now uh, at, at this age after about 40 years of starting businesses, uh, growing companies. Uh, now with my, my company, Idea Pros, I have 400 companies under me. So I'm carrying the shoulders. Uh, my shoulders are carrying 400 startups on them. So very, very hard work, uh, never ending 24 seven, but I'm also loving what I do. So it doesn't feel like work some days. Oh my God, thank you for, for sharing that. How can you, how can you handle 400 companies? I mean, we can, there are people out there who cannot even handle one. <laughs> What's your secret? <laughs> um, there is no secret. I do not suggest this for anybody in their right mind. It's very, very hard. The, the whole reason for doing this is I'm, I wanted to start giving back. You know, they say you spend the first half of your career building your resume and the second half building your eulogy. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm in the second half of my career where I'm trying to give back, I'm trying to empower entrepreneurs, and I'm trying to give the people that work with me an unfair advantage uh, from the years of mistakes that I've made in my career and uh, multiple successes I've had as well. Mm -hmm. So I know that you have really inspired thousands of people, you know, to pursue their dreams and achieve their goals. But what is wrong with the picture? Because every business owner wants to be successful, right? And they do tons of things every day, overwhelmed, stressed, and putting out fires all day long. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's a couple of secrets that you really should take as a business owner. One is knowledge. And that, that knowledge is that the leading cause of failure for new businesses is that we've created something that there's no demand for, that nobody wants. Mm. It's astounding that that's the biggest issue, but it is. And how do you get around that? You get around it by stop building, stop creating, stop trying to sell things that you love, that you want, and start understanding what your audience wants, what your customers mm -hmm. want, and try to pivot your business so that you understand their needs, their demands, why they're loyal to you, and really focus on that part of it. That's the one thing. The second thing is to stop thinking about your profits. Instead, start thinking about your cash flow, because things look really good on paper sometimes, and they're really bad in the bank. For example, you get a big, huge order. If you're here in the US, you get a big, huge order from Target for the whole country. All of a sudden, it, it looks great on, on your profit and loss statement because now there's a million dollar order there, but it looks mm -hmm. terrible in your cash flow because now you got to go get all the money to make all that inventory, to sell all that inventory, to wait 60 days 
for that money to come back in to anticipate the number of returns that you're going to get if they don't sell like they should. So keep an eye on the cash coming in and the cash coming out. That's your biggest barometer and also the number two reason that most young companies fail. They don't have the cash flow mm -hmm. they need. That's very good. That, I love that because not very often people talk about that. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's very important. So knowledge, uh, it's not, what I heard from that is it's not about you, it's about them, right? We are here to serve our audience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I have a, uh, a bracelet and my bracelet says, I am second. And that's how I mm. treat my life in every aspect of my life. My personal life, I, I give more than I receive, although I receive a lot because I give so much. And in my business life, same thing. Be second. Don't focus your business on you. Focus your business on your audience and your customers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But still, it's so hard to do that, right? We are only focusing, you know, on how to get more out of the business ourselves. But uh, I have a feeling that our the, the target audience and and customers and clients around us they can feel that. Really, let's be honest. Yeah. You you feel that even yeah. if you don't show that, but still you kind of feel that. Okay, you are not here for me. You're just doing that for yourself, right? Exactly, and, mm -hmm. and you don't want to do that. Yeah, nobody wants that. So there is a saying. I love that saying that overnight success comes in twenty years. Yeah, right. So what what yes, are what are your thoughts here? <laughs> well, you know. You, all you got to do is point to some of the companies that we either respect or hate the most uh, to see that that overnight success syndrome uh, doesn't exist. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, the most prolific company in our lives today is probably Google. You know, mm -hmm. we Google this, we Google that. We're at the dinner table, at the office. Uh, we use Gmail. Uh, we they're just permeated in our life. There's Google phones, and yet. They started out being called Backrub. Uh, that was their first name because they were mm. scraping the, the, the internet to see which businesses had most backlinks to them. And they would highlight those ones and feature them a very cumbersome way uh, and uh, intense way of doing things. They didn't make money for a lot of years. And then mm -hmm. when they first started, they changed their name to Google. Along came the internet bust. And uh, 1999, 2000, uh, so many companies from that era just disappeared and got nowhere. Well, they they struggled. They they picked up their uh, lives by the business lives by the bootstraps and just carried on. So they started making money after a decade, and now they're a household word. Airbnb is, is similar. You know, we look at companies like that that are multinational, multi-billion-dollar organizations, and when they started out they were renting two air mattresses in an apartment in San Francisco. That was the first. Everybody wants to have you know, an app like Airbnb. Well, the first Airbnb app was you could rent an air mattress for the weekend. And, <laughs> and it got so bad for them that during one of our presidential elections, they created these big four foot uh, cereal boxes, fake cereal boxes, I think it was uh, Obama and McCabe, and they had cereal boxes with names of the pre presidential uh, nominees or candidates. And they went out and sold those like door to door to try to make enough money to make payroll, to, to, to pay rent, to, to have enough money mm -hmm. to eat ramen. And um, th those are perfect examples of organizations that took a long time to become successful. And, and mind you, because a lot of people are also worried right now about the macro environment. You know, what's mm -hmm. the world doing today? The inflation, uh, unemployment, although here in the US, it's a record low around the world. There are issues with it. Those two companies and some of the biggest companies in the world all started or all were born out of really bad economic times. So if that's happening to you as a business owner, hang in there because Bad economy gives you an example, uh, an opportunity to kind of get your stuff together, start selling, and go into the growth that's going to be coming around the corner. Oh my God, it was so needed right now, what you were just saying, because 
you know, people, especially here in Europe, they are they are w- very much worried about what is going on right now because of the economy, and also there is a brutal war in Europe, which is horrible, and people are, yeah. you know, they are worried. That's for sure. And now we are talking about, you know. You should prepare for a long game here as a business owner. <laughs> How do you prepare yeah. yourself for that? <laughs> well, you have to understand a couple of things. Number one, people need to do things. People need to eat. Mm-hmm. They need to sleep. Mm-hmm. They uh, they love to travel, and th- that's been pent up for years. Um, people need to buy things to run their own businesses, to run their own homes. Uh, people need things like uh, restaurants, they need to go out to nightclubs once in a while, they they need to go to the gym. I mean, there are things that even in bad economies, people need to do. So whatever you're selling as a business owner, focus in on the things that people really need, regardless of the outward economic Mm -hmm. conditions. Uh, I had a a guy that follows me on, uh, on social media and uh, that's official Fred Carey, by the way, if anybody wants to follow me, I got about half a million followers there. And he's from Namibia, and he was unemployed for nine months. And uh, it was in the middle of COVID. And I told him, go sit out on your front lawn for or your front porch step for two weeks, and then come back to me and tell me what you saw every morning. And mm-hmm. when he came back, he said, I see people in a hurry to try to get to work or go back in their homes. And just a lot of people are out there walking their dogs and that's about it. And so I said, okay, let's start a dog walking service. And within about (laughs) six months, he became the largest dog walking service in Namibia, not only walking dogs, but grooming dogs, boarding dogs, finding a supplier that could give him dog food that he could sell right to those owners. So there's always an opportunity. People always have to do things, good times, bad times, find the things that you can give them that they're going to need regardless. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's very good because there is always an opportunity and, uh, and crisis is always also an opportunity. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. But what else is there when we think of, you know, about how to be prepared for the long game you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, uh, the cash flow and the knowledge, and I couldn't agree <laughs> with you here more. Yeah. So is there anything else we should, we should discuss? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times we're reactive instead of proactive in our businesses. We're re- reacting to the conditions mm-hmm. that we're all suddenly facing, but you need to be able to anticipate those conditions. So for example, right now, if you're cash flowing well, your lenders are going to be able to give you lines of credit that you may not need right away, but you don't want to approach them when your cash flow is not so good. You want to be able to anticipate your financial needs and be able to either borrow early or have that line of credit that you know you can borrow from. And sometimes, by the way, it's even borrowing, uh, getting a line of credit against your, your own residence, your own home. I've done that countless times in the 10 different companies that I started from the ground up. I've borrowed money based on my other assets when I needed to do that. So be prepared. If you're talking about a long game, be prepared to have that extra cash available for you when you're having slow months in your business. If you do that in advance, then you're going to be able to sleep at night when, when that month is not, you have too much month for your money, as they say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those are very important um, things to, to go through as a business owner. But um, let's be honest, we are not prepared for everything and we don't know those things. We don't have all the skills. So it takes a lot of work and that's why I understand it takes 20 years or you know, plus minus some years <laughs> because we yeah. are usually learning you know, uh, why we are doing that, right? Yeah, exactly. You you mm-hmm. are not going to become an overnight success, but you can be more and more successful every single week, every single month, mm-hmm. every single year, if you just keep your eye on your long distance goals, and then look at the kind of short term tactics that you're going to need to get there. So when you're looking out to the future, about 10 years out, 
five years out, three years out. Look down below you and look at that next step that you have to take and, and keep an eye on that step and understand how that translates into getting closer to your long-term goals. So keep your long-term vision, but focus myopically on the tactics you need to have to get there step by step. Mm -hmm. So what I hear is that you can't really build successful business without, you know, first building yourself, your skill set, your knowledge base, everything. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's a process that never ends. Uh, mm -hmm. Last night, um, before I went to sleep, I was looking over documents, papers, um, marketing materials, mm -hmm. uh, learning about uh, new ways to present yourself uh, to an audience, uh, learning learning mm -hmm. about new techniques that are being utilized now that are working really well. And um, when you do that, uh, then you can stay ahead of the game. It, Life is about learning and mm -hmm. you need to continue learning until the day that you pass. And if you don't <laughs> do that, then you're gonna, two things are going to happen. Number one, you're not going to be very successful. And number two, you're going to have a pretty boring life. So wake up in the morning, <laughs> eager to learn something. Yeah, I agree. And we should do something every day to make sure that we are growing. Right. So I heard this, um, saying, uh, that even if you have a goal to be, you know, 1% better every day, then it means, you know, after a year, you are like improved like 365%. <laughs> so that's a huge number. <laughs> yeah, lofty goal. Uh, but, <laughs> but the reality is when you look at yourself in the mirror every morning, mm -hmm. you got to try to see something a little bit different every day. You got to yeah. look at yourself and maybe your smile is going to be a little bit bigger, even if you're having hard days. Um, uh, last night uh, on my story on, on Instagram, I told people, ask me any question. And one of the questions was like, do you ever feel like giving up? You know, and I've been really successful in my career. And the reality is on a weekly basis, sometimes you mm -hmm. get stresses no matter where you are in your life because the more successful you are, the bigger the demands on you are. So you always mm -hmm. have that level of stress, the level of uncertainty. Am I doing enough? Am I trying enough? Am I, am I going to succeed? It's there every day. And my answer was, yeah, I have the, I have thoughts like that every day, but then I realize that that's not an option. That mm -hmm. If you can realize that, that, giving up is not an option for you. And if you can make that part of your mantra every single day, I cannot give up, then you have no alternative, but look at the choices for success. And if you can focus on the choices for success, you're going to win. It's just like mm -hmm. the skiers that go down the expert skiers that, that go and ski through the trees. They're not looking at the trees. They're looking at mm -hmm. the path. If you look mm -hmm. at the tree, you're going to hit the tree. You know, you look at the path, you're always looking for the path. And when, and the trees in our life is our failure points, the, the places that we want to give up in the places that we think are going to hurt us, forget those things and look at the path, stay on the path and you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. I love that comparison. Never thought about that. <laughs> That's yeah. a very scary road, you know, very quick and. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I only, and, I only and, ski on blues, so I, I, I would not go anywhere near a tree, but I, I learned to ski same at 50, here. so I have an excuse. Really? Good. We'll ski together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but I get that and, and I agree with you. It's, it is so important because everybody has second feelings, you know, and we are, yeah. we all have those days, but what differs successful people from not so successful people is that they they will do those things despite of the bad day or something right but yeah yeah uh, mm -hmm. and, and I, i'm going to guarantee everybody in this audience one thing and that is that you're going to fail and mm -hmm. the difference between successful people and, and non-successful people is you embrace that failure because that failure becomes a learning opportunity and you can learn mm -hmm. how to do things better in a different way, change your course, pivot your plan. Uh, 
if you can take failure as a temporary obstacle that is a stop in the road where you can pick up more knowledge and then get moving again, then you're going to be successful. Mm-hmm. I love that. So yeah, self, you know, growing yourself and your company, it's, that is something we just have to do. But I'd like to yeah. touch my own personal favorite topic for a second, if you don't mind, because you already mentioned that marketing, You're the boss. sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about how, how vital are, you know, branding, positioning, naming. I mean, we are playing the long game here, right? We talked about that right. already. Right. So right. what are your thoughts? I would love to hear them. You know, and you're really asking the right person because <laughs> throughout my career, the hardest job for me to fill was VP of marketing. Uh, it's it's like the brain surgeon, the heart surgeon of your business. Uh, it really is. the. Think about it this way. You and I talking together for half an hour, we, we get to learn quite a bit about each other. And, and I... I think in just a short period of time, I can understand a little bit about your personality. You're a nice, fun person, very smart, very personable, driven. And I can see all that about you. Hopefully I'm not wrong, but uh, I, I see. No, all, you're not. All Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see all those things about you, but you can't see a company. And mm -hmm. you need to think of your company like a person mm -hmm. and you want to dress that company in a way that other people can have an impression of who that company is in a, in a impactful way that's meaningful. And so your branding and your positioning, your naming are critically important. If you think of, think of about this, think many, many years ago, you were in an audience of a thousand consumers and this little guy in a black t-shirt gets up on the stage and says, Hey guys, I want to start this new computer company and I want to compete against IBM, against digital equipment, against Microsoft. And he lists off five other names that have all these industrial connotations to them. And he says, I want to call my computer company Apple. How many people would raise their hand out of a thousand? I can tell you <laughs> zero. Everybody th would think that's the dumbest idea of all. But mm -hmm. what do they do? They brilliantly change the whole mindset. They familiarize the computer to the human. And an Apple is soft and biteable and Adam and Eve and, and Newton. And there's so many illusions when you think about an Apple discovery right? You mm -hmm. don't get that from those industrial names. So, so that $2 trillion company right now that almost went bankrupt, by the way. Um, so hang in there. Uh, that $2 trillion company was started in a way that was completely different than the competition that showed things in a new light that represented a relationship between them and their customer like no other company has. Now, Mind you, I don't own one Apple product, but I own a whole bunch of Apple stock because I understand that they're a great organization. I just don't want to be caught in an environment where if I buy one Apple thing, I have to buy every Apple yeah. thing. And that's Same here. part of the, <laughs> right? Part of the brilliance of what they have is they, they own your ass. Uh, yep. You say it that way, but they do so in a way that you're a kind of, they're the prophet and you're a follower. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that creates this sticky environment where, where your customers become passionate advocates of your brand. Mm -hmm. And when you have people mm -hmm. who are out there passionately espousing your benefits, you're going to have great sales because they're going to sell to all their friends and this other mm -hmm. person is going to sell to all their friends. And another thing on Apple, they start with their why. All, everything that they do starts with the why, where most computer companies or any other company starts with, hey, I got this great computer that I'd love to sell you. And it's got mm -hmm. this much power and this much storage, this much memory, and you can do these seven great things with it. Apple s starts on the opposite end of that. They, they start with, with the, we're different. Mm -hmm. you know, everything that we do is meant to change your life in a positive way. We wake up every morning with a commitment to do better, to be different, to excel, 
to change the world. And then, oh, by the way, we happen to sell computers. Would you like mm -hmm. to buy one? Mm -hmm. You know, so you, mm -hmm. you buy into them and their why first, and then what they're selling is secondary. If I told everybody in your audience that I just read an article that tomorrow morning, Apple is launching a new electric toothbrush, which is not true, but <laughs> it would be cool if it is, because we all know that it's going to be sleek. It's going to have a few cool, cool colors. It's going mm -hmm. to be able to give you feedback on how well you're brushing. You'll be able to keep <laughs> charts of what you're doing right, what you're doing poorly. And, um, and you're going to be able to tie it into your phone to listen to music while you're, <laughs> while you're brushing your teeth, right? We all know all those things and none of them exist. We know them because we understand that company and what they stand for. And we know that mm -hmm. any product that's going to come out is going to have that same sort of build to it. And that's what you need to do as a company. You need to find out what you really are. Project that. That's why naming, positioning, branding, so powerful. I just love that because that is so true. And I would love to try this toothbrush. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm not <laughs> also using Apple products, but that sounded, it sounds very fun. <laughs> yeah. If but, they ever uh, announce that, remember this podcast, people. <laughs> But um, another thing, here's a book suggestions for all the listeners who don't know uh, this book, Why by Simon Sinek. Start with Why by Simon Sinek, yeah. right? because this is yeah. classics. And uh, I, I could not agree with you more, what you just said, because this is 100% what we also teach and what we preach here. And um, it is critical to think about, you know, what what they want. It's more about the value and less about the marketing itself. Because oftentimes yeah. when you talk about marketing, people are thinking about the ads or the funnels or the, you know, all bunch of things which are not marketing, which are just ads or just communication right. channels. So right. it, I'm so glad you just talked about that. So we are clear here. And another thing I wanted to, I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts right now, what I see there is a huge trust crisis in marketing. The world is overwhelmed. You know, there are superficial ads, funnels, there are scammers out there, and it's harder every day to understand who we can trust really, right? So it's it's not enough if you have a great website and, you know, s some great flyers out there. You need to show who you are, why you are there, you know, what really differs you. And, um, and it really blew my mind when I read that study by Foreigners Group, and they, um, they, they said that 80% of the CEOs also do not trust marketers. So how can you align your marketing with your business goals, and results and sales when you even don't trust your own marketers? So there are so many <laughs> problems <laughs> in this world. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, <clears throat> well, that's an astonishing number. I, I haven't heard that number before. Yep. But um, to me, that's the fault of the CEO, not the marketer, right? You need to make sure that you're, that. <laughs> you need to make sure that your organization is aligned with your vision, your mission, uh, mm -hmm. the, your strategies. And that starts at the top. Uh, you know, when you, when you're building a, a company culture, uh, for example, you can't just dictate from your throne at the top. Uh, and, and those of, I know a lot of people are small business owners, but this, really applies as well to a small business as well as a medium or, or a multinational organization. You can't develop culture in a company unless you have buy-in all the way through. You can't just mm -hmm. say, hey, this is our culture, act this way. <laughs> culture happens because it starts at the top, but also it starts in the opposite fashion from the bottom. And mm -hmm. when we're trying to do when we try to build our culture in our own organization, we don't not only talk about what we stand for, but we go to the rank and file employees and ask them what they want to do in their lives, what they want to be. We know a lot of people like that are working at the lower levels of an organization probably don't want to be there forever. There's going to be some that do, but there's others that have these aspirations, these goals, these dreams, these desires. And you know what? It's really powerful if part of your culture is empowering those dreams. And so we ask every employee when we have meetings, what is it you want to do? What do you want to be? And oh, the first mm -hmm. time I asked that, I was shocked because so many of them were doing things on the side already. 
I have one, we have um, some employees in Mexico and Tijuana right across the border from us and they help us with our call center uh, stuff. They're amazing. They're such hard workers. And I went down, I was talking to them and one guy's buying lots. I, I, he's he's 23. He's like, I, I try to save up enough money to buy a lot, buy another lot. By the time I'm 30, I want to have I want to have 10 lots and I want to build houses and sell the houses. Another woman uh, in that same group was she was making jewelry and she had her own online jewelry store that she was making really incredible things. So assume that your employees have lives that they want to have. And if you can empower those lives, then you can build that corporate culture mm -hmm. that you need. This is a long way to get to, to answering your question. <laughs> you can build that corporate culture that you need. So you have full alignment throughout the organization, including the marketing area. Mm -hmm. when the, so the marketers, when they're out there speaking and putting together ads and putting together their, their funnels, they're doing so in a way that they really understand what your company is all about. And they're projecting what that company needs to show in order to keep growing. Mm -hmm. I am so glad where this discussion have really <laughs> led us. That's that's very good. I could talk to you hours, but I need Perfect. to be <laughs> mindful about the time. So our culture is built on we we really want to connect, inspire and support people, right? Support small business owners uh with their marketing so please please tell us where can people connect with you or follow you because i'm sure they want to you know learn more from you <laughs> yeah and, and, and by the way i have some very expensive programs for people to work with me on but i also have a lot of free stuff and mm -hmm. if you go on instagram and you go to official fred carry i post twice a day and my posts are about entrepreneurship about positive thinking, about personal development, about waking up in the morning, being happy because you finally found a way to align your passion and your purpose with the work that you're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so a lot of people find that page pretty inspirational, a couple minutes a day, tune in and listen there. Also on ideapros.com, that's my main company, there's a blog page on ideapros.com that I'm so proud of and I had little to do with other than the fact that oh, that's an example of a great marketing effort. Um, <laughs> I had um, I, I speak on Facebook every Friday for a half hour show and we tackle different entrepreneurial experiences and things that they need to uh, to know. And that blog page, every single thing you could possibly want to know as an entrepreneur is on that blog page. It's all indexed. A table of contacts, uh, uh, content. So if you want to learn about how to market during bad times, click on the marketing tab and it'll, it'll, there are probably mm -hmm. three or four or five stories. Those are, those are things that are available for free. And, and we also have things that are inexpensive, like for a couple hundred dollars, I have a course on purpose-driven entrepreneurship, how to align mm -hmm. your life with your business and do a lot better. It's, that's on the website. And we can also help you discover what your business is all about, whether your business is on the right track, things you need to do to make it more successful. Uh, and, and you can find that kind of business analysis on there too. I think that things that's around a thousand dollars or something like that, but it can make a hundred thousand dollar difference in, in how you're going to be spending your money and mm -hmm. what you're going to be building when you go forward. Well, thank you. We will put those links next to the, this um, video or audio or you know, next to the <laughs> next to the materials we share. Yes. So, um, last but not the least, we are we want to inspire you know our listeners also uh, with music and uh, with some uh, great takeaways. So, are you ready for a one minute podcast part? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> so, uh, this is the part where I will ask three questions, and you have only a minute to answer. So God, I'm feeling the pressure already. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do that. Please share a song that inspires you and why. All right. So this is an old one, but this is a very inspirational one. And it's Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles. 
And if you listen to that song, it's full of hope, it's full of energy. It kind of teaches you that no matter how crappy your day is today, that tomorrow it's going to be better. And the sun is right around the corner. If you can listen to that when you wake up in the morning. In fact, years ago, I used to have that as my wake up song. Um, I, I think that's a, a great song for all of us. Well, it sure is. Thank you. It's very inspiring. <laughs> so yeah. it goes to our Spotify list. Here comes song, not song, question number two. <laughs> okay. A, a quote you think our listeners should know and why? All right. Well, I'm going to give you my tagline and hopefully it's not offensive to people in the audience. Um, but I have a trademark tagline that uh, basically says, fuck average, be legendary. And I think that's an important quote uh, because that's how you have to te te teach your kids, not using those words. That's how you have to act <laughs> yourself. That's how you have to be in your life. Uh, if you, we all want extraordinary results, but we don't want to mm -hmm. do the extraordinary things that, that we need mm -hmm. to do to get those results. So if you can wake up in the morning and figure out how am I going to be legendary today? How, what mm -hmm. one extraordinary thing am I going to do today? Then you can be on that path to have that extraordinary life. You, you want to have so like average, anybody can be average, be legendary. <laughs> I just love that. It's so bold and it's so empowering. And I feel already I'm being legendary today because I'm meeting you, you know, here. Oh, I'm very glad. Likewise. <laughs> I'm really glad I've met you too. So now, last but not least. Question. Yeah. So please share free main things any business owner should take from this interview today to to really thrive results yeah i think the one thing is you know we all talk about work life balance and mm -hmm. the struggle to achieve that if you can find a way to have purpose in your work to do things that you're passionate about in your life at, at work then you don't need work life balance because it all becomes this one beautiful painting that it is all encompassing in your life. And one day you may have to work 22 hours. The other day you're working three hours. You're, you're, you're doing what you need to do to have a better life. And to, as you said, be 1% better every single day. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one thing, find alignment between your personal life, your business life, and find a happy marriage for that. Mm -hmm. um, the second, the second thing I think that you need to take away from this, no matter what you're doing. If you're selling hot dogs, you're doing brain surgery, you're creating the next greatest social media app. Uh, be different. Learn what your competitors are doing. I don't care if, if, if you got a hot dog stand across you that's selling $5 hot dogs, go out and find some premium hot dogs and sell hot dogs in your bikini. Uh, do get better <laughs> beef, sell non beef hot dogs, do something different, no matter what it is that you're doing. When you're mm -hmm. different, you stand out. When you're different, you become the apple of your business. So always focus on being different and leading with that persona that you need to create. You could be a dentist and do the same thing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Understand your competitors and be different than they are. That's mm -hmm. powerful. And then the third thing, you need to prepare for bad times ahead of time. Mm -hmm. When you wait until bad things happen, then you're scrambling, then you're up all night long, then you're trying to figure things out. If you can anticipate that there are ebbs and flows in business as in life, right? Some days your marriage is going great. Other days you want to kill them. Uh, and, uh, uh, and that's the way life is. That's the way business is. And if you can prepare for that in advance, when you start succeeding, look behind you because those competitors are coming behind you and they're going to eat you up if you're not paying attention. Pay attention mm -hmm. to your competitors. Pay attention to your customers. Pay attention to macro changes in the environment. And with that knowledge, you're going to do a lot better and you're going to sleep a lot better. And your marriage is going to be a lot better. <laughs> What a great wrap up, really. It's, <laughs> it's so powerful, very inspiring. And Fred, you're so appreciated, you know, that, that you took this time for, for being here today. Thank you so much. Well, I, I love it. I, as I said before, we started my trainer is not going to be very happy. Oh, 
That's another thing. I know we're running out of time. Guys, <laughs> this is what you need to do every single day. Work on the most important thing, you. Before you start working on your business, work on you. I get up early. I work out for an hour to 90 minutes every single morning. After that, I have positivity. I express my gratitude. I meditate for a little bit of time and I'll read, whether it's a page, a chapter, or half a book. Take care of you first. And so when you start your day, you're going to start your day refreshed, full of energy because you've worked on your body, you worked on your mind, and you worked on your soul. I just love that. And another book recommendation, Hal Elrod, Morning Miracles. I'm also in the 5 a.m. club. So, oh my Good. God, keep on doing great things and uh, building those businesses and helping people. Thank you once again. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, that's all we've got for this episode of the Powerful Marketing Tips podcast. But make sure to link up with us at our free monthly international mastermind event. Just go to powerful-marketers.com forward slash mastermind. We would really appreciate it if you would rate this podcast and leave a comment wherever you tune in to listen. That will help us and other potential uh, new listeners. Until next time.